What's going on, everybody? Crazy Dog back for another video. And this will be my Browns versus Lions Week 10 preview. Now, my Browns are coming off a much needed bye week, while the Detroit Lions are coming off a nice win at Lambeau Field against the Green Bay Packers, who they haven't beaten at Lambeau too often. I believe that was only their second win at Lambeau Field against the Packers in a very, very long time. That's crazy. They're 2-24 and 24 at Lambeau Field against the Packers. You're kidding me. <laughs> oh, my God. But it's what happens when you got to face guys like Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers. You're not going to beat them at Lambeau Field too often. Now, of course, the Packers uh, have Brett Hundley at quarterback. So it's not surprising that the Lions got the win. And now the Lions return home to face my winless 0-8 Cleveland Browns who are coming off the bye week, as I mentioned. Now, um, got some good news on the injury front, as pretty much everyone on the active roster practiced. Corey Coleman practiced, but he will not play as he was just uh, brought off the IR. So look for him to play next week against the Jaguars. But it's nice to see him back on the practice field. And uh, he was actually asked about his hand, and he said that he is 100% healthy. Thank God, because uh, we need him, because our receiving core is trash right now. Not only that, but Josh Gordon officially uh, returned to the facility. He's doing uh, individual workouts and going to team meetings and stuff. Can't officially practice with the team until November 20th, and he can't be activated until November 27th, which is the day after the Bengal game. It's going to be nice seeing him on the field again. And just by looking at him, you know, on video, because, you know, Browns media were interviewing him today. He looks lean, he looks mean, and he looks ready to torch some corners. It's going to be fun. But, um, yeah, can't wait to see Josh back on the field. Hopefully uh, he does what he did in 2013. Goes absolutely nuts. In fact, I got a bold prediction for you guys. When Josh Gordon comes back, he's going to uh, beat every single wide receiver we have here right now on this team in touchdowns and receiving yards. In the five games he's going to play. He's going to have more touchdowns and yards in five games than all the other receivers are going to have in a full season with this team. <laughs> like, it's going to be funny. He's going to already outdo Kenny Britt in, like, one game because Kenny Britt freaking sucks. He only has one touchdown and about 100-some yards. Like, he freaking sucks. He sucks so bad, he was relegated to second string. <laughs> He sucks. Mm -hmm. Did I mention Kenny Britt sucks? Well, he sucks. But anyways, looking at this Lions game, I do believe there is a small chance we can win this game. I mean, we are going to the Lions then. They're coming off a nice victory. They're going to be hyped. I think we're going to be hyped up too. We're not trying to go 0-16. I think the Browns are going to win a game this year, maybe even two games. When that'll be, who knows? But uh, I just hope uh, we don't wait until the final few games of the year to win because that's going to be a lot of pressure. You know, I don't want to be going into week 17 against the Steelers at Heinz Field trying to get a win. I don't want to join the 08 Lions as the only teams to go 0-16. You know, I want to keep roasting that team because they were absolute trash. This team is not built like that. We got talent. That team did not. I would have understood if last year we went 0-16 because we completely gutted that team. This team is very talented. This is not an 0-16 team. Hopefully we at least get two wins this year. At least. 
But uh, with the way Hugh Jackson's coaching has been and with the way we've been playing, I don't know. But uh, enough talking about that. Let's get to talking about this game. Of course, I'm going to start off with my three keys to victory. Then I'm going to give you guys my player to watch. And then my uh, final score prediction. So um, starting with the three keys, key number one, stop Matthew Stafford. Yes, that's how you win this game right there. Stop Matthew Stafford. Because if you let him do what he does best, and that is pick you apart, oh, game over. We might as well uh, get back on the buses. But the good news is Miles Garrett's back. So I don't think Stafford will have too much time in the pocket. Because he's going to be thinking about number 95 trying to uh, kill him. Well, not necessarily kill him, but uh, beat him up, bury him, put him in the dirt. Yeah. Now, um, looking at the Lions offense, they got a lot of weapons. Martin Jones, Gordon Tate, Eric Ebron, Abdullah, and Theo Riddick. Those are the notables. So, got to watch out for those guys. I know our secondary will be ready for him. Let's just hope our pass rush can uh, give him a boost and get after Stafford. We cannot have Stafford sitting in the pocket for four, five seconds while his receivers get open. Because they will beat us like that, all right? Now, key number two, give the ball to our playmakers. Duke Johnson, David Njoku, and Seth DeValve. Those are effectively our three biggest playmakers. Cor Corey Coleman's not back yet, so got to wait. I wish he was coming back this week, but nope. So until he comes back, uh, we got to deal with Bryce Treggs, Kenny Britt, Rashard Higgins, Ricardo Lewis, guys that really don't scare anybody. So uh, give it to uh, guys like David Njoku, Duke Johnson, Seth DeValve. Maybe you can even try Isaiah Crowell. Wouldn't that just be awesome if he just went nuts in this game? He looked good last game, besides the fumble. But, yeah, he's somewhat reliable, you know. But uh, I don't really know if I could trust Crowell. You know, I mean, going into this season, he was looking for that big contract. and He's looked like garbage. And uh, if he continues to play like he's been playing... He ain't going to get nothing, bruh. <laughs> he ain't going to get nothing. Meanwhile, we're going to draft Saquon Barkley, most likely, hopefully. And Crowell will get beaten by uh, Barkley. Barkley will take his spot. And we'll probably wind up cutting Crowell if he doesn't go to another team. Now, uh, key number three. Limit mistakes. Yeah, because uh, over the course of this season, we've had opportunity after opportunity to really do some damage. And the Browns continue to shoot themselves in the foot with turnovers and penalties. If we can just completely rid ourselves of penalties and turnovers, which is impossible, we'd be undefeated. <laughs> but no. That ain't going to happen. I mean, we're the Browns. We always find a new way to screw up. So maybe, you know, as long as we can limit the turnovers and penalties against us, we'll be fine. Now, I got a bonus one for you guys, and that is force a crap ton of turnovers. Yeah, limit our turnovers, but force a crap ton of Lions turnovers. You know, get some interceptions, force some fumbles, maybe even get a... uh. You know, strip sack, fumble, return for a touchdown. Wouldn't that be awesome if Jabril Peppers forced a fumble, picked it up, and took it in for six in Michigan, where he uh, played collegiate football, or at least near where he played collegiate football? Yeah, that'd be awesome. But I don't know if that's going to happen because Greg Williams has that dude literally playing in the stands every down. So uh, we'll see what happens. That would also be awesome if Peppers took a punt to the house. That'd be cool. What if he took a punt and a fumble to the house and an interception? Oh, my God, the defensive triple crown. Oh, my God, the triple crown. Oh, 
a punt return touchdown, an interception, a pick six, and a fumble recovery for a touchdown. Imagine if Peppers did that in Detroit this weekend. Bruh, Twitter would explode. <laughs> that probably won't happen, but hey, you never know. But uh, anyways, my player to watch, it's pretty obvious, Miles Garrett. You know, he's coming back. He has, what, four sacks on the year in three games that he's played. He did not play in the London game because of a concussion, but he is 100% healthy now and looking to tear some people up. I can't wait. Now, as for my score prediction, if you watched my uh, picks video, I picked the Lions to win. So I'm unfortunately going to stick with that here. I do think Miles has a good bounce back game, but we're facing Stafford in the Lions' den. He's probably going to pick us apart because we're the Browns. I don't think Abdullah or Riddick are going to kill us. I think our running run defense will be able to contain them, but I don't think we're going to be able to stop Stafford. So uh, I'm going to pick the Lions to win this game. I'm going to pick them to win 24 to 10. Yeah, I think Stafford goes nuts. Hopefully, you know, this is like a reverse psychology and the Browns go out there and get a W, make me look stupid. All right, go out there and make me look stupid, Browns. I'm picking against you. Make me regret that. All right, I'm Crazy Dog 99 Before I end this video, quick shout out to uh, all you DVE members out there, especially the two that I know of. Uh, Craig Jockman and Man Beast Morris. Shout out to you Lions fans. I don't really hate the Lions. You know, uh, this should be a good game, hopefully. Hopefully the Browns give you a nice beat down in your own house, which that most likely won't happen, but you never know. But yeah, um, that's going to do it for this video. I'm Crazy Dog 99 Let's go Browns. Let's try and get a win. I picked you to lose. Make me look stupid. I... Let's go Browns and I'm out.